Welcome back to Mason Talks. So we are back after a brief hiatus and ready to talk about the start of the 2023 NFL offseason. Now, things are about to really start kicking into gear this coming Monday, March 13th. That is when the NFL's legal tampering period begins. So that is when the Browns and Andrew Barry will ideally start making some moves to make this team better. And today, I wanted to go through some players in the five biggest positions of need for the Cleveland Browns and talk about some of those players, either via trade or free agency, who I think the Browns should take a look at acquiring to ideally make this team better make it to the playoffs next year, and keep Andrew Barry and Kevin Stefanski employed. And I think that we need to start at the very top with the biggest need on this Browns team right now, and that is at defensive tackle. Now, you look at the 2022 Cleveland Browns season, and the immediate thing that sticks out that was a huge problem is the defense. And that's why Joe Woods is now gone. That's why Jim Schwartz is now in. And that's why the Browns are probably going to spend a lot of money and a lot of draft capital trying to resurrect this defense. And I think it starts with your defensive line. The Browns went into last year without a ton of proven talent at the defensive t- uh, defensive tackle position. And it showed. It ended up being a really big detriment for years. The last like four or five years, the Browns have been really, really solid against the run. And then you get to last season and you had guys like, uh, uh, you know, Jordan Elliott and Taven Bryan who were trying to, you know, just either, either young players or not that great veterans trying to fill in those holes and just at least be decent. And it, it they weren't. They were not decent. It was awful. So I really think the Browns need to not only get some some veterans in there, I think they need to get some legitimate talent. And one area that I would look at in free agency is a former Philadelphia Eagle, Javon Hargrave. Now, Hargrave is one of the better defensive tackles on the open market, and he had a great year with the Eagles in 2020 when their defensive coordinator was Jim Schwartz. And I think this is going to be a key thing to pay attention to in free agency is what what players are the Browns going to get to try to appease Jim Schwartz? Because you know that that is going to happen. You know they're going to get they're, they're going to be out there trying to get players who he wants to try to fit his scheme. And I think that Hargrave would be a great option. Another guy who would be a very talented option and a very good veteran to 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 put onto that defense would be DeForest Buckner. And again, he's just a guy who you know is a proven talent and would immediately raise your defensive line's play from just, you know, completely awful to probably pretty good. So those are two options that I think you could look at in your defensive tackle position. Now immediately shifting to the left or to the right, the second position of need that I think is a huge concern right now is defensive end. Now, this has been a discussion the entirety of Miles Garrett's career. Who are you going to have opposite of him? Who's going to be the other defensive end? Because that is a key issue. Because if you don't have anybody that great, teams are going to be able to to double-team Miles Garrett. And, you know, a single-covered Miles Garrett is much more of just a dynamic wrecking ball than a a guy who's constantly getting double teamed. And, you know, it was Olivier Vernon for a while, and then it was Jadavian Clowney for a while, and Jadavian Clowney completely fell off and threw his career away this past season. And once again, the Browns are looking at their defensive end position opposite Miles Garrett and saying, who on earth are we going to get to play there? Now, I am going to bring in, I am going to suggest a familiar name for Browns fans. Not a guy who's played here, just somebody who we've talked about seemingly every offseason for the past five years, and that's Yannick Ngakwe. Now, Yannick Ngakwe 
it it he he's been a free agent like the last what three or four years. He's played with Las Vegas. He's played with the Colts. He's played with the Ravens. He started with the the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's just been bouncing around trying to get a team to give him a big time contract, uh, and nobody will. Everybody's just giving him these one-year rentals, and every single season, he has been mentioned as an option for the Cleveland Browns. And what that tells me is that probably he is a Paul D. Podesta guy, because Paul D. Podesta has been one of the consistent forces here for years. It could be Andrew Barry, or you know, whatever. But I feel like that's a guy who Paul D. Podesta probably has his eyes on, Unique Ngakwe. And it's not, you know, I'm not like dissing him. He's been a very productive defensive end. Um, you look at his stats year by year, his, his his sack numbers specifically. I mean, he is one of the more productive defensive ends on the open market this year. And it just feels like destiny that he's got to end up with the Cleveland Browns. And if he ends up being the other starting defensive end opposite Miles Garrett, I think that that would be a really good um, either, either you know sh- stopgap player, maybe give him another one year contract, let him do it again next year, or even if you give him some sort of you know team friendly deal, I think that'd be a really good pickup. Another defensive end who I think would be interesting would be John Kaminsky from the Detroit Lions. Now he has said he wants to go back to the Lions, but he's going to test the free agent market. He is a Northeast Ohio guy, and he's starting to hit his stride. He started to hit his stride last year with the Lions, and I think that that's the type of player you might see Andrew Barry try to find value in, or you might see the Paul D. Podesta scheme try to find value in. He has not hit his peak. He has not had his best season ever, but he's on that upward swing. And if he had a little homecoming, to the Cleveland Browns, to the area where he played high school football and all that, you might get him on, you know, reaching towards the peak of his career. This might end up being like a deal for the Browns. So that's just another guy to keep your eye on. John Kaminsky, I think that'd be interesting. Now, the third position of need, and I really do think that this is a big position of need for the Browns, is the wide receiver position. Now, the, obviously, the Browns have two very talented players in Amari Cooper and Donovan Peoples-Jones. But outside of those two, the Browns don't have reliable pass catchers, and they don't have any speed. Anthony Schwartz, it, you know, he's fast, but that's like all... He, he's, a, he's a track star who's not really a football player yet, and we never know if he ever will be. Anthony Schwartz might just never be able to catch footballs. I mean, that could just that could just be the case. So I think the Browns need to go out and get somebody who's proven to be a contributor to a winning team and fast. And when you consider those two factors, the player who immediately stands out the most is Miko Hardman. Now, Miko Hardman, 24 years old, He's a he's a he's a speed guy. He's a burner and he's got two Super Bowl rings with the Kansas City Chiefs. He has been a big part of what the Chiefs are doing and he's really one of those guys who can take the top off of a defense and spread your offense out down the field. And that is something that the Browns need. If they want Deshaun Watson to be at his very best, if they really want Deshaun Watson to carry this team above anybody else, if this is going to be a pass first offense, they have to give him a, a, a variety of offensive weapons. They have to give him a ton of different players at the wide receiver position and at the tight end position to thrive. Not every player who's going to be a pass catcher is going to be some superstar. I mean, you're not going to have 10, you know, Amari Coopers or 10 Tyree Kills on your team. And, you know, Miko Hardman is far from a superstar player, but he'll give your offense a dynamic that they don't have and they haven't really had for years, and that is speed. Another guy who I think could provide that is Paris Campbell, previously of the Indianapolis Colts. He's another guy who I think would give the Browns a, a, an edge that they haven't had in their passing game for a long time. 
So those are two two receivers. If I could have one of those two, I would take Nicole Hardman. I think he's a very, very good uh, speed receiver, and I think that that's something the Browns need. Um, but regardless, if it's not Hardman, if it's not Campbell, the Browns have to get somebody. They probably need to get multiple somebodies at that wide receiver position. You have to put weapons around Deshaun Watson if you want him to be that, you know, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, whatever level quarterback. You've got to give him the weaponry. The fourth position of need, linebacker. Now, the the, the Browns have not placed much value on linebacker in a long time. And obviously last year, the Anthony Walker injury really, really deteriorated this room. Obviously, Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa also had his injuries that he was dealing with. So, you know, injuries were a problem last year. But I also think it'd be good for the Browns to just get some veterans across this team, get some players who've played for good teams. I think that that is something the Browns are lacking. They need players who've played for good teams. And one player who could give you that immediately is Leonard Floyd. Now, he's getting cut by the LA Rams. He's a cap casualty. They're getting rid of him to free up cap space. And I think he's a guy who you can plug into this defense as a veteran, and they will immediately, he'd immediately make them better. Another player who I think fits that role is David Long, of formerly of the Tennessee Titans. Now, David Long... He he's a little bit more unique in this free agent discussion, being that he was literally name dropped in the Jim Schwartz press conference when they asked Jim Schwartz what types of players he'd want on this team. He said he wanted a linebacker like David Long. So that is something to keep your eye on. But uh, uh, again, much like the wide receiver position, if it's not one of those two, you got to get talent at that linebacker position. You've got to get players who can come in, make an impact immediately, and be good locker room guys. I know that that's a cliche, but the Browns need it. I mean, the Browns have had a toxic work environment for years, and and that's something they need to fix. And I think that you bring in outside players who can, who can make that better. Now, the fifth position of need, safety. Obviously, John Johnson's, he, he's gone. And he's been one of your top safeties for the past couple of years. So now that he's gone, you got to fill that spot. And the first player who's been on the Browns radar, or at least on Browns fans' radar for like months now, is Jesse Bates of the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, Jesse Bates said that he would like to play with Deshaun Watson. I think that's a little interesting. I think it shows some of the pull that he still has in the league. And if you brought in Jesse Bates, that would be an absolute home run hit. Another player who would not be a home run hit, but at least he'd provide some depth to your safety room, would be, would be Andrew Wingard from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, I think that if you brought in a guy like that, you know, if you left Jesse Bates on the market and brought in another safety who you know, wasn't quite at his level of talent, that'd probably open the door for you to take a a, a safety relatively high up in the NFL draft, which they might do anyway. Obviously, the Browns don't have a first-round pick in this draft. Um, But I think that safety might be a position that you look at in the draft as opposed to taking one um, or, or, you know, investing a ton of money in one in free agency. Um, I just think that that's one of those positions that Andrew Barry being the type of general manager that he's been, that might be one of those positions that he sees more value of drafting a player um, in actually like going out and making it one of your... Uh, although they did sign John Johnson, so who knows? Jesse Bates would be an absolute home run, and I really do think it's interesting that he uh, said the stuff about Deshaun Watson, and you know they share an agent and all the, everything like that, so just he, he's somebody to keep your eye on. Um, but those are some players that I think would be good for, for the Browns. Those are some players that I'm going to be keeping my eye on defensive tackle, defensive end, wide receiver, linebacker, and safety. I think those are definitely the biggest positions of need. Let me know in the comments. What do you think are the Browns biggest positions of need and who are some of the players that you would like to see them target? Thank you for listening to the Mason talk sports show. I will see you in my next episode. Goodbye.